Hey everybody, it's Scrim. I'm just going to show you some basics of ship fitting in EVE Online using a breacher. So up here on the top we have high slots. Those are typically for weapons or utility items and you can see we also have three hard points for launchers. So we know that we can fit three missile launchers up in these high slots. Down here we have four mid slots. These are for other items like scrams, webs, micro warp drives, afterburners. And then down here you have low slots. These are for items that either modify your engineering points or give you different hull or armor bonuses. And then over on the left side here you have rig slots. These are items that you can install to boost certain bonuses, but they are permanent once installed, meaning if you rip them out they are destroyed. Down here we have the cargo bay of the ship, which is currently empty, and the drone bay. So as we try to fit up this simulation here, we'll be watching our capacitor, our DPS, our defense, um, looking at our targeting range, navigation speed, and then drone DPS is down here. We'll add a little bit of that. Cost is at the bottom. And most importantly, we have our CPU output and our power grid output, which gives us a limited amount of space to fit items on a ship, depending on where your skills are at. So I like to start with my weapons. I'm going to be using some light missile launchers on here. So if I hit my filters, I can go to uh, my launchers turrets here. So I don't want hybrids. We're looking for missile launchers. Light missile launcher two. I can either drag and drop, or I can double click. So I've got three launchers in there, and now we're going to load them with the ammo we're looking for. So if I go right click the item, go to used with, and scroll down, I'd be looking for Inferno Fury light missiles. I can either install them in a single launcher, or I can just drop them in the center, and it will load all of the launchers. Then since this ship gets a bonus to shield boosters, seen on the traits page of your ship, light missile and rocket rate of fire and shield booster, I'm going to try to stick a shield booster on here. You can see that every level, level of uh, Minmatar frigate that you skill up on gives you a 7.5% bonus to shield booster amount. So shield boosters can be a medium slot. This is a small. I'm going to put a 2 on there. Alright, so my capacitor has dropped down quite a bit because that shield booster is using up a large amount of capacitor. Um, I'm also going to be using a micro warp drive on this particular ship. So we go to propulsion, micro warp drives, and we want a 5mn. I'm going to be using the compact 5mn because it fits a lot easier with low skills. So now we can see our speed with the micro warp drive turned on went up to 3069 meters per second but our capacitor also dropped way down to only 30 seconds we'll take care of that so to adjust your capacitor we're going to be putting in two cat batteries so i can close out propulsion and go to engineering we've got different types of cat batteries here we're going to put not one, but two compact batteries on. Okay, so I see our power grid is in the red. Capacitor went up a little bit. We'll work on adding a few other modules and then we'll fix that power grid issue. So every good combat ship has a damage control. Um, one easy way to find items in your different slots if you don't know what category to look under is just type it in the search bar. So we've got damage control here, I'm going to install on damage control 2. Then we're also going to add in some ballistic control systems to increase our missile damage. So if I go to low slots, take out the text here so it doesn't filter anymore. Go to turrets and bays. Now if you're using missiles, that's a ballistic control system. If you're using um, different weapon types, there's different bonuses here. Magnetic field stabilizers are for hybrid turrets. Heat sinks are for lasers. Gyro stabilizers are for projectile turrets. So we're going to look under ballistic control system and I'm going to install two of the Tech 2 versions. 
Okay, so now my CPU and my power grid are in the red, but we still have rigs available that we can use to boost those numbers. So we're going to close this out and go to rigs. I'm going to be using some small rigs for engineering. First one I'm looking for is a small, oops, looks like I clicked on the wrong one here. We'll be using a small processor overclocking. So this one right here, drop in there. You can see that fixes our CPU issue. Then we're also going to use a small ancillary current router to fix our power grid. I'm going to use a Tech 2 version. Okay, these can be quite expensive if you're using Tech 2s, but it does fix your issue with the fitting. So the only thing we have left to fix now is I want to bring our capacitor up to make it more stable. So we'll be looking for a capacitor control circuit. And if you don't know what any of these modules do, or these rigs, just click on the information tab, go to description, and it tells you what it does. So we're looking for the capacitor control circuit, and we're just going to use a 1. I want this because it increases the ship's capacitor recharge rate. Basically, recharge time, negative 15%. So take this and even drag that over. So if you look now, my capacitor is stable, so I can run every module continuously without running out of capacitor, and my CPU and power grid are stable, they're not flashing red. Now my DPS is only at 91.9 .9 with the light missiles installed, but we can still install some drones here. I have a drone bay. So if I click up here on drones, I'm going to look at some light scout drones because they each take up 5 M3, and this one has space for 10. So I can just double click these, and you'll see that my drone capacity goes up, and they're both installed and have X's. So now my DPS is up to 130.7. Down here you can see my drone DPS is 38.9. Now. If I want to have ammunition installed in the cargo bay when I buy this ship, I can simply come up here, find the charge info, drag the charge down into there, and then multiply that by however many I want in the ship. A thousand of those. Another thing I can do is install charges. Now, some charges won't show up here. Um, so you gotta click the little charges button on the side here. So if I search here again for paste, I get an anti repair paste. I can drop that into the cargo bay and multiply that by however many I want. All right, then once you see that everything's in the green, you can go over here and click your skill book or skill mode. And if it's blue, it means you have the skills for the required items. If it shows up red, you do not have the skills and you need to right click the item, go to requirements and see what skills you're missing. These ones are both white so we're good to go. If I go back to the modules tab, I can also test to see what my overheat numbers look like. So if I hold down here and go to overheat, these items turn bright red and my DPS goes up. To return it, just go back to the check mark. Alright, another thing to consider is your weapon range and your locking range. So on this particular breacher we have light missile launcher 2s. You can see the maximum flight range is 31 kilometers with my skills. So max weapon range 31 kilometers on those. If I come over to here I can look at my targeting range which is 43 kilometers. So I'm happy to see that my lock range is further than my targeting range for these weapons or for my uh, max flight range and they'll work perfectly. Down here you can see that my drones can fly out to 57 kilometers, which is further than my targeting range, but since my light missiles can't go that far, I'm pretty much going to stay inside my 30 kilometer engagement range. Shield booster, if you click or mouse over this, you can see that it's 43 hit points for every two seconds. Different shield boosters have different times on them, so it may say nine seconds or six seconds easy way to average it out is just come over here 
make sure you click shield boost rate and it says 21.4 hit points per second so you can always measure it per second and see what you're currently getting resists over here um, this is going to be showing what amount of damage you're resisting from the enemy so on my shields you can see the resists are pretty high on explosive but very low on EM and the opposite is true for the armor high on EM resists low on explosive if you know what type of what faction of pirate or player you're fighting you know, what ship they're in you can actually tailor your resists to resist the type of damage they're throwing out at you and you'll see that my damage control here bonuses all resists especially hull so damage control is always a good thing to stick on a ship unless you really need that slot for something else as far as skins go this is a little button right here for skins if I was to exit simulation click the skins button these are different skins that are available for the ship and I don't own these five here but I do own the hunter's quiver if I click this it will turn the skin off and you can see it's brown again if I click it, the skin goes back on. Now as far as buying your fit, it's quite simple. You just come over here on your simulation window with your pre-made ship. You can see the estimated price for the current region that you're in and open multi-buy. So it will populate a list of items that you currently have fit and in your cargo bay and in your drone bay as well as the ship. Okay, it's just saying that there's a few items I had in this previous fit that are not on the market. So here's the items to build the ship. It's always a good idea to check some of your prices to make sure they're fair prices. So I can see that I'm buying three light missile launchers at $1.1 million, totaling 3.5. That adds up pretty clean. There's the ship, all the items I need. Then, if I wanted to buy this, it's going to cost me $13.6 million, which is slightly different than the estimate seen here, because this is just a rough estimate. At this point, you'd click buy, and all these items would show up in your ship hanger and your item hanger. At that point, what you want to do is you jump in your hull. So let's see. If I wasn't already in it, there would be a make active button here. Like this. I would jump in the ship and I would hit fit ship. The following items could not be fitted, saying they weren't in my cargo hold. And then it gives you the option to buy those. So now if I exit the simulation, I can see that all the items are on my ship. Now the last thing to do is to insure your ship. So you can right click it here or back in your hangar. Click insure. Just accept. And it gives you insurance options. So you can hit platinum, click insure, and then you will get insurance on that ship. This one currently is already insured. Then from that point, undock your ship and go try it out.